The Alexander Romance Having captured Babylon, which he had planned to make his imperial capital, Alexander acquired full control of the enormous Persian Empire. Alexander then pressed on, turned northward to Afghanistan, Bactria, Sogdiana and the Hindu Kush mountains, and finally conquered the northern region of India in 326 BC. Alexander founded several cities in his new territories in the areas of the Amu Darya and Bactria, and Greek settlements further extended to the Khyber Pass, Gandhara and the Punjab. In 323 BC, on the eve of an expedition to conquer Arabia, Alexander fell ill and died at the age of 33. After his death, his generals broke up the empire, establishing realms of their own. Antigonus governed Macedonia and Greece. Phoenicia, fell to Ptolemy Sater who established himself as satrap in Egypt and eventually adopted the title of king in 304 BC, inaugurating the Ptolemaic dynasty that ruled Egypt for 300 years. Seleucus became satrap of Babylonia, founding the Seleucid Empire, that at its greatest extent included central Anatolia, Persia, the Levant, Mesopotamia and what is now Kuwait, Afghanistan, and parts of Pakistan and Turkmenistan. The Seleucid Empire's geographic span, from the Aegean Sea to Afghanistan, brought together a multitude of races, Greeks, Persians, Medes, Jews, and Indians. Its rulers were in the position of having a governing interest to implement a policy of racial unity initiated by Alexander. By 313 BC, Hellenic ideas disseminated by the conquering Macedonian armies hired philosophers and historians, retired officers, and married interracial couples had begun their almost 250-year expansion into the Near East, Middle East, and Central Asian cultures. It was the empire's governmental framework to rule by establishing hundreds of cities for trade and occupational purposes. Many cities began, or were induced, to adopt Hellenized philosophic thought, religious sentiments, and politics. Synthesizing Hellenic with native cultures and intellectual trends met with varying degrees of success resulting in times of simultaneous peace and rebellion in various parts of the empire. In the Alexander Romance, composed in the Greek language before 338 AD, an account parallels a similar one in the Quran, where Alexander the Great chases his enemies to a pass between two peaks in the Caucasus. With the aid of God, Alexander and his men close the narrow pass in the Caucasus by constructing a huge wall of steel, keeping the barbarous Gog and Magog from pillaging the peaceful southern lands. The Travels of Sir John Mandeville a travel memoir which first circulated between 1357 and 1371, explicitly associates the nations confined by Alexander with the Ten Lost Tribes. The Ten Lost Tribes had come to be identified with Gog and Magog sometime around the 12th century, and possibly the first to do so was Petrus Cumister in his Historica Scholastica, c. 1169-1173. The accounts of the Alexander Romance are reflected in the enigmatic figure mentioned in the Quran, named Dhul Karnain, literally he of the two horns, who some Muslim and other commentators have identified with Alexander the Great. 27 Likewise, Alexander was already known as the two-horned one in early legends. 28 The description may ultimately derive from the image of Alexander wearing the horns of the ram god Zeus Ammon, as popularized on coins throughout the Hellenistic Near East. 29 Alexander has also been identified, since ancient times, with the horned figure in the Bible who overthrows the kings of Media and Persia. In the prophecy of Daniel 8, Daniel has a vision of a ram with two long horns, and verse 20 explains that, the ram which thou sawest having two horns are the kings of Media and Persia. According to Josephus, in his Antiquities of the Jews, when Alexander met the Jewish high priest Jadwa in Jerusalem and the assembled Jews, he was shown the book of Daniel, and he believed himself to be the fulfillment of that prophecy and was pleased. 30 This identification continued to be accepted by the Church Fathers. 31. As pointed out by Peter G. Biotenhals, by combining two passages in Josephus' Jewish Antiquities with one in his Jewish War, we learn that Magog, a son of Japheth, was the founding father of the Magogai, commonly known as the Scythians. 
living in the regions of the Tanis Don River and the Mautic Marshes, Sea of Azov, the Scythians one day defeated one of the generals of Alexander the Great. 32 To prevent further advances, Alexander locked them up in their territory by blocking their passage through the Caucasus with iron gates. In Roman times, when a Scythian tribe, the Alans, were planning a further expedition to plunder Armenia, Media, and the regions beyond, they allied themselves with Artabanus, king of Hyrcania, 465-464 BC. 33. Around the beginning of the Christian era, a version of the story composed in Jewish circles in Alexandria, appears to have added elaborate details to the narrative, which inspired both Pseudo-Calisthenes and Pseudo-Methodius, the source of the medieval tradition in the West. 34 The Alexander Romance is any of several collections of legends recounting the legendary exploits of Alexander the Great. The earliest version is in Greek, produced in the 3rd century AD. Several late versions attribute the work to Alexander's court historian Callisthenes, but the actual historical figure died before Alexander. Therefore, the unknown author is referred to as pseudo Callisthenes. The text was recast into various versions throughout antiquity and the Middle Ages, including the languages of Syriac, Arabic, Persian, Ethiopic, Hebrew, Turkish, and Middle Mongolian. In addition to the Alexander romance of pseudo calisthenes the Syriac version also includes a short appendix now known as the Syriac Alexander legend. This original Syriac text was written in North Mesopotamia around 629 to 630 AD, a little more than a decade after the revelation of the story of Dhul Karnain, but before the Muslim conquest of Syria and the resulting surrender of Jerusalem in 636 AD. 35 It contains additional motifs not found in the earliest Greek version of the romance, including the episode where Alexander builds a wall against Gog and Magog. In Asia, the development of the romance was profoundly affected by the so-called Christian legend concerning Alexander, an apocalyptic work not known in the West, until a Syriac version was published only in recent times. 36. In the account found in Chapter 18, The Cave, of the Quran, Dhul Karnain is not identified with Alexander, but the stories are almost identical. This chapter was revealed to Muhammad when his tribe, the Quraysh, sent two men to discover if the Jews could advise them on whether Muhammad was a true prophet of God. The rabbis told them to ask Muhammad about three things, one of them about a man who traveled and reached the east and the west of the earth, and what was his story. 37 According to Islamic tradition, the verses were revealed in a period that would have preceded the compilation of the Syriac Alexander legend. Nevertheless, as pointed out by Kevin Van Bladel, almost every element in the Quranic version of the story tale is also recounted in the Syriac Alexander legend, but in a more detail where it is quite a bit longer. Each of the five parts of the Quranic account has a match in the Syriac text, and is presented in precisely the same order. 38. Dual Karnain is described as a great and righteous ruler who built the wall of iron and copper that keeps Gog and Magog from attacking the people whom he met on his journey to the east, the rising place of the sun. 39 There he meets a people for whom God did not provide protection from the sun, a possible reference to the white-skinned early Caucasians. According to Islamic traditions, unable to pass the wall, Gog and Magog have been digging below ground ever since, and will emerge at the time of the return of the Messiah Jesus, to afflict the earth, but Jesus will pray to God to eradicate them. 40 The wall has been frequently identified with the Caspian Gates of Derbent, Russia, and with the Pass of Daryl, on the border between Russia and Georgia. An alternative theory links it to the Great Wall of Gorgon, also known as Alexander's Wall, on the southeastern shore of the Caspian Sea, 180 kilometers of which is still preserved to this day. In the Muslim world, several expeditions were undertaken in an attempt to find and study Alexander's Wall. An early expedition to Derbent was sent by the Prophet Muhammad's successor Caliph Umar, 586-644 AD, during the Arab conquest of Armenia, where they heard about the wall from the conquered Armenian Christians. The expedition was recorded by Al-Tabarani, 
873 to 970 AD, IBN Kuthir, 1301 to 1373 AD, and by the Muslim geographer Yaqut al Hamawi, 1179 to 1229 AD. Finally, elsewhere the Quran it is mentioned that the end of the world would be signaled by the release of Gog and Magog from behind the wall and other apocalyptic writings report that their destruction by God in a single night would usher in the day of judgment. 41